change for political action. And this is a whole bunch of dense information about the process that people go through. When they're taking. And I'll be going over this with you in, in a short verbal form. A second one that goes along with that is the yellow one, the little yellow table. And that one essentially captures and condenses almost all the stuff in the long white document. And this one you may in fact be referring to in some of the exercises we do. Um, and the third one is factors that increase influence. And again, that's one you can do as a take home. Um, but I'll be going over a lot of the points in there for you. <coughs> These, these things, the social, the stages of change are based on social psychology. Um, and these are studies of how people behave in any kind of setting. These are not specific to this issue, they're not specific to communicating about marriage equality or lifestyle issues or health issues. This is how people change in general, and what's been observed. And what they found is that there are basically six steps that people go through when they're, they're in the change process. Uh, the first one, which is sort of self-explanatory, is called pre-contemplation. And pre-contemplation means they aren't even thinking about change. It doesn't occur to them at all. And I bet you're going to find the people like those Limbaugh listeners and some of your religious fundamentalists and traditionalists may all be in that category. This is not on their radar. You go from there to the next group of people, contemplation. And what happens with these people is they're sort of beginning to think, well, you know, maybe my opinion isn't totally set concrete. I can imagine something like that. Or they begin to get uncomfortable with their position because they see that there's a contradiction between what they believe on one hand and what they believe on the other. Um, they then go, people will go into a stage that's called preparation. And when they're in preparation, they're beginning to think about, well, what would I actually do? You know, if I, if I really didn't want to be that way and I wanted to do something different, how could I do it? What could I do? Like, would I actually invite my son and his partner over for dinner? Would it be just us? Or would it be somebody else in the family there, too? I mean, you know, when they're beginning to think through scenarios for themselves, there's a stage then that's the centerpiece that we te would tend to think of, which is action. You actually do the thing. The following action, which is a, a short phase that people may go through with their action or they may not, a person gets into a phase that's called maintenance. And when they're doing maintenance, they're kind of trying to consolidate this in their minds and say, well, yeah, I actually did it. Yeah, my son. My son is dead, and maybe I can tell my neighbors. So they're all actually almost starting to prepare themselves to go back and take another action step. And so this kind of cycling back in through how they implement change in their lives goes that way. And then finally it's called termination, but it's not like the terminator, <laughs> um, is when they're already through this process and they're totally comfortable with where they are. And in fact, they just integrated into the way of life. Now, these are pretty predictable phases that people go through. An important thing to know is that this pre-contemplation phase may be somebody's whole life. They may never get out of that. Contemplation may take a couple of years that somebody's beginning to get uncomfortable with something, beginning to change their mind, and they aren't there yet. By the time they get to preparation, I mean, usually it doesn't take people more than about six months. I mean, it may, it may only take a matter of a week for some people, but it could take a number of months, and that wouldn't be unusual. Action is 
often a very short period of time, but it depends on what the action is that they're actually having to do. Maintenance, again, may take them not just one year, but it may take a couple of years for them to really get comfortable and see how this change that they've made in their beliefs or their actions works into their life. And then termination is sort of essentially for the rest of their life, and then they're ready to go on and do other things. Now, these are important to know about because when you're interacting with one other person, it's really helpful if you know, if you can figure out which stage they're in. Because that tells you both how likely you are to get something to happen right now in this interaction, how long it might take if you're in continued multiple interactions with them, and so it kind of how patient you have to be. And, you know, if you, if you walk away from this conversation and, gee, I didn't make any impact on this person, and that I could tell, and this person was in pre-contemplation, well, you kind of expect that. I mean, it's going to take a long time for that person to get out of there, so don't beat yourself up on it. But know that there are certain things that you can do and should do, as opposed to other things you shouldn't, that may influence how likely they are to move along in this change process. And in fact, the funny thing is that if you do kind of a wrong thing, you can actually drive them back the other way. So, in other words, counterproductive, yeah. The thing that came to me as you were going through that uh, on this particular topic is that you've got, you've got the ability to um, break it up into smaller issues. So if somebody's in pre-contemplation just about accepting gay people in the world, jumping them all the way to marriage equality may extend the pre-contemplation contemplate, may never get there on that issue. But if we start a conversation on a smaller part of the issue, that they may be able to move through action, like you said, oh, inviting my son and his partner over. That doesn't say anything about I'm gonna throw him a wedding. But they, you gotta get them to dinner first. <laughs> you're, you're extremely perceptive. That's exactly the reason it's worth finding out where people are. Because if you try to push somebody too fast, too far from where they are, not only can they not hear it, but it may intensify their adherence to the position you'd rather they not be in. Um, another thing that'll make people get extremely resistant is arguing. Arguing is not the way to go. And even if there are people who love to argue, don't take the bait. Because what that will do, in, in the process of their repeating their position strongly, it reinforces those same pathways in their brain and makes them more likely to adhere to their opinion. And instead, you've got to get them off of that topic a bit. And I'll go through the stages one at a time now to tell you how you go about approaching them. And these are things that you'll find are very helpful when you look at it later. They're all summed up on the yellow sheet. Don't look at the yellow sheet now, look at me. <laughs> but, but just so you know where to look for it. It's not like this stuff, oh my god, I've got to remember this. How am I ever going to remember it? It's all a jumble because it's all on the paper. Okay, the person in pre-contemplation, so I said they aren't really ready for anything. They're not interested in changing. They probably don't discuss LGBT issues at all. Or if they do, it may be in this baiting kind of way, like was referred to by the Limbaugh listeners and the people who just love to be argumentative, because they, they kind of like to pick a fight or belittle somebody. And there's no payment payoff for you in getting into that with them. Um, they may be people who are just apathetic, like those teenagers you referred to, or, or don't see any personal reason why they should change. I mean, like the, the person who doesn't care about um, marriage because they are, hey, I'm not interested in marrying, what's it to me? I don't care what happens to the legislation. And, and so your challenge when you're dealing with those people in pre-contemplation is to get them interested at all in what the topic is. And one of the, in terms of what you can do as then, I'm going to call it a change agent, that's you trying to bring about a change, is try to understand their perspective, ask them questions.